Good afternoon, I'm Karen Holmes Ward. There's lots happening in neighborhoods around the city. Later in the program, the hip hop spoken word phenomena produced by Hamilton's Lin-Manuel Miranda is coming to the Boston stage. But first, after an effort spanning many years, bilingual street signs have been installed throughout Boston's Chinatown. The Chinatown Residency Association finally won their long fought battle to have signs at key intersections displayed in both English and Chinese. We spoke with some of the residents that made it all happen. Chinatown. If you live in Boston, chances are you've probably visited this lively neighborhood. Whether it's searching for authentic cuisine or taking in the sights and sounds of the festivals and celebrations, this community has a lot to offer. But today, the residents of Chinatown have something new to celebrate. It's been over a decade. But we have never stopped. We never cease in our effort in advocating for bilingual street signs in Chinatown. Meet Wang Saixie and his colleague Yao Feng, members of the Chinatown Residency Association and longtime advocates for the recently installed bilingual street signs in Chinatown. Most of us have had this hope in our heart to have the installations of bilingual street signs in this community because wayfinding is extremely important for a lot of us who are not able to read the English street signs, especially the older adults. It's very easy for them to get lost. It may seem like a minor detail, mostly unnoticed by the casual passerby, but these new bilingual street signs on Beach Street, Tyler Street, Harrison Avenue, and Neyland Street represent a victory in a 10-year battle for the immigrant community in this neighborhood. Ever since we have started advocating for bilingual street signs and it was approved, we would come to Chinatown daily looking to see when the street signs will be installed. It's no secret that the Chinatown Residency Association is elated over the city's choice to recognize their call for inclusivity. But how are the signs being received by the rest of the community? I think that might be a good gesture to start, to just include more people. Maybe they don't speak English at all, but if they read the sign, yeah, maybe they can feel included. That's oh, great. I think it really is good for the heritage of the, the area, and it's nice like to recognize that Chinese uh, ethnic cultures live here, so it's great. It's very positive, and everybody knows that Massachusetts try very much to be inclusive, to accept every minorities, and even to prevent bad negative things to happen. It's a wonderful thing for Chinese people in Chinatown. So, you know, people that don't read or uh, speak English is a big help show, you know, that the city of Boston care about this Chinatown community here. American people do care for immigrants, especially a new immigrant that don't speak English and all those elderly people. Though not always acknowledged, immigrant communities have been an integral part of American culture since its inception, and the Chinese-American community is no exception. Boston's Chinatown and its residents provide a wealth of value to the city, and their history and heritage should not be forgotten. At least now, supported on the shoulders of their diligence, their language will be honored. We're able to carry over the culture and the rich history of China into this community. There is a resident who live in our building. When the woman saw this bilingual street sign, she was so thrilled. She jumped up in joy. Wow, there are only a few cities in America that provide this type of signage for their residents. So Boston's street signs are a welcome sight and an emotional victory for the neighborhood. Now we head over to Park Square, where you can see the work of one of the most beloved artists of all time, as it's never been seen before. Frida Kahlo's paintings brought to life by the same groundbreaking team behind the immersive Van Gogh exhibit. Shana Seymour with the state-of-the-art 360-degree colorful and vibrant immersive experience.
The Lighthouse Art Space at the Castle in Boston welcomes the traveling exhibit, Immersive, Frida Kahlo. We're here to celebrate her life, her love, and her dream. The dream of iconic Mexican artist Frida Kahlo. Here, guests can immerse themselves in Kahlo's art and also learn about the complex woman behind her pieces. When the person walks into the gallery, they're not just seeing things that she painted, they're seeing the emotions and the feelings behind the events in her life and how they relate to her work and how they inform her work. Grab a seat and take in 40 minutes of 500,000 cubic feet of art in motion, 90 million pixels, 1,200,000 frames of video. We have about 46 projectors. What people will see is a kind of multimedia experience, part audio, part visual. Kahlo's art mirrored her life's journey. She had polio when she was much younger, and she was involved in a terrible bus accident. She was bedridden for several months. And her mother encouraged her to start painting by constructing this easel that was over her bed. The exhibit includes photos of Kahlo at various ages and images of important figures in Kahlo's life, including her husband, artist Diego Rivera. His access to the art world helped her place a footing into the art world as well and show what she was capable of doing. Grab your phone and uncover five of her self-portraits. She was an oil painter primarily, and she was probably most famous for her self-portraits. I believe she had about 46 self-portraits. A selfie queen before selfies. Known for her individualistic and rebellious spirit, Kahlo stands today as a symbol of female empowerment. Immersive Frida Kahlo on display through early May. A new way to experience art. And Immersive Frida is at the Lighthouse Art Space at the Castle through May 8th. Up next, local chefs put to the test. A new food competition that challenges more than a dozen Boston area chefs to recreate each other's signature dishes. But there's just one major catch. We talked to the host of Boston's new show that's now streaming on Very Local. That's next on CityLine.